Being able to check the integrity of a file is very important, and anything we download from the net could easily have something malicious attached to it, so there's no reason to just believe people when they say something is authentic. We need a way of testing, and a checksum is a good way of doing that. Now, a checksum is a mathematically calculated value used to verify the authenticity of something. There are quite a few algorithms used for this, and if you've seen a cyclic redundancy check failure in Windows before, you will have already encountered the CRC algorithm. There's also MD5, but we'll be looking for this at SHA, which is Secure Hash Algorithm. So here we have our Kali ISO, and before we want to install it, we need to check that there's nothing spurious attached and it hasn't been tampered with. So a quick way of doing this is we go to the Kali website, and you see there's a SHA-256 value here next to the file that we've downloaded. So we're going to open up Terminal and run a simple command. We're now just going to drag this into Terminal to populate the file path. Enter our password. And off it goes. There we go. Now we can see here that this value exactly matches the SHA value given to us on the Kali download page. We have 49B1C5769 and ending with E11E9D. So because these two match, we know that our Kali ISO is absolutely authentic. We can do the same with our Mint ISO. So here we're going for Mint 18.1 Serena. Now we're going to choose our 64-bit Cinnamon edition because the desktop is far superior and in authenticity we follow this link to verify the ISO. We choose our version 18.1 and this file here is what we need, the SHA-256 sum text and this gives us our keys. So what we'll do now is open up terminal again, press the up arrow to repeat the command clear this path and just drop our mint ISO in there. There we go. Now I've done this so many times I can tell you right away that's the correct value, but if we look here, this is what we're looking for because we have the 64-bit 18.1 and we're looking for B99F4B, which we have here. And again, all the way through to the end, it's completely correct. So we know that our Linux Mint download is absolutely authentic as well. Be careful to use the right flag. You can see in my SHASUM command I've used an A flag with 256. If I don't specify this, it's going to use SHA-1, which is the most common hashing type. And the problem with that is that we're going to get some slightly different results. So if I take that out and then just drag this in, <coughs> you can see that we get a much shorter and completely different value. So it's really, really worth checking that you're using the correct function. And again, it will tell us here, for example, SHA-256, so you're going to know which flag to use. Now, I've got this little document here just to show some of the other uses of this. It's not just for verifying the integrity of downloads. For professional um, forensic work, this can be really, really useful. For example, we might be given a drive to examine that will later be used as evidence, so we have to prove it hasn't been tampered with. We can use the same process for this when we receive the drive or the image of the drive or the file then we can generate a hash value and we can then inspect the drive we can gather evidence but when we submit the drive we can calculate the hash value again and if it's identical we can prove that nothing has been tampered with now this isn't absolutely a hundred percent accurate because there are things like disk errors or corruptions that can alter the value but this does provide a very very high probability that nothing has been tampered with so let's just have a quick 
look at this. We're going to use the 256 again. And we're just going to use this document here. It's going to be much faster because it's a tiny file. <coughs> so that's our value. Now, if we open this up and just even put a full stop in there, close it and do it again, we can see we have a completely different value. So even something as small as a full stop will generate something completely different here. So in this case, we know that this file is not the same as this. And again, it's not 100%, but there's a very, very high probability that something has been changed within.